Nothing draws attention like a well-built set of shoulders. But that's not the only reason to train them. Your shoulder is the most mobile joint in your body, but it is also the joint that is most susceptible to injury. So it's important to keep your shoulders mobile, strong and stable. To train your delts effectively with bodyweight exercises only, we developed a list with 22 shoulder-focused exercises ranked from worst to best. In this list we mainly focus on strength-based exercises with the ability to build muscle. So pure mobility and or stability exercises are not included in this video. For information about this topic we link to other, more mobility-focused videos in the description or you can just head over to kellymove.com and get our mobility program. Please keep in mind that exercises on the lower ranks are not ineffective in general. Exercises on the B and C rank can also be used to train your shoulders, but they are not as good as the ones in the higher ranks. Alright, let's start with the D rank and here we got the side plank rotation. This exercise has a similar shoulder movement like a bent over lateral raise. So instead of raising your arm with a dumbbell, you rotate your body while your arm is fixed. The problem with this exercise is that you need a lot of abdominal strength and also support from other muscles like the serratus anterior. The stability component in this movement is so dominant that you can't really focus on your delts and with that won't be able to train them that effectively. Let's continue with the crab walk. This is also more of a compound movement instead of a shoulder builder. To do the crab walk, you not only need coordination, but also strength in your whole posterior chain, so nearly all muscles of the backside of your body. The good thing about the crab walk is that you work your rear delts, which are often neglected in shoulder training. Next on rank D is the back bridge push-up. Here you need a certain amount of spine and even more shoulder mobility to do it. You can have the strongest delts in the world, but if you can't open your shoulders, you won't be able to hit your delts that effectively. This exercise is more of a mobility movement that targets the whole posterior chain of your body and is not optimal to train your delts in the first place. The last exercise on rank D is the plank up. This is more of a compound movement with a strong abdominal component instead of a shoulder builder in the first place. It's still superior to the regular plank because the press up emphasizes your shoulder, especially the front delt, way more than the forearm support only. So it's a good way to modify the standard plank, but it's still not one of the best shoulder builders out there. Let's move on to rank C and here we start with the reverse planche lean. This exercise targets your rear delts, but even the slightest lean requires a lot of strength and concentration. Like most of the other exercises mentioned before, it's also not a pure shoulder builder. The triceps for example is also heavily involved in this movement. In addition you need a certain amount of mobility in order to get into the right position for the lean. Another exercise on rank C is the back lever and all of its progressions. If you do this exercise with an overhand grip, you emphasize the front and the middle delt. If you do it with an underhand grip, you mainly emphasize the front part. The underhand grip also puts a lot of pressure on your biceps and its tendons, so be very careful. In general the back lever is not a good shoulder builder to jump right in. Without proper joint preparation and the right technique it can do more harm than good. The last exercise on the C rank is the Korean dip. This exercise is very dangerous due to the extreme shoulder extension. It's also very tricky to push yourself up because you have to arch your body in order to get your butt around the bar. A fix for that would be rings. With the rings you can dive into and out of the movement without any kind of barrier. Similar to the back lever, it's possible to do this exercise with different grips that affect other muscles and the position of your shoulder joint. 
In general, the Korean dip is only suitable for advanced athletes who already have strong and well-built tendons. We recommend to have some experience with other shoulder extension focused exercises like the Easy Bridge and the Skin the Cat. Now we move on to the B rank and the first exercise is the regular push-up. This exercise targets nearly all of your upper body push muscles evenly. So it's not a direct shoulder focused exercise, but still a very good compound movement to train your shoulders in combination with your chest and the triceps. Similar to that is the regular dip. But here you have to push your whole body weight without any feet support from the ground. As in the regular push-up, you get a great mix between chest, triceps and shoulder activity, even if you target those muscles at a different angle and body position. The next exercise on the B rank is the handstand walk. This movement is great to work your front and middle delts, but it also requires some core strength, coordination and stability. Similar to that is the pike walk. The only difference is that you need less strength because your feet are placed on an object or on the ground. You can also vary the difficulty of this exercise by placing your legs higher or lower. Next on rank B is the prone race. This exercise focuses on the rear delts, but also hits your middle traps and rhomboids at the same time. The only problem is that you can't modify the difficulty of this exercise if you are doing it with your body weight only. So if you can do a lot of reps easily, just add some weights, like two bottles of water. The last exercise on the B rank is the planche lean or the planche hold. Both exercises and all of their progressions are very shoulder dominant. You can even increase the work for your delts, especially the front part, if you shift your weight more in front of your wrists. Both exercises are very close to the A rank. We only put them on the B rank because they are static movements and have no eccentric and concentric component. Now we move on to the A rank and here we got the planche race. Any progression of this exercise is really good to target your delts. It's superior to the planche hold because you work with a dynamic instead of a static movement only. The planche race is like a closed chain front delt race because instead of your arms, you raise your body. We put this exercise on the A rank because it requires a lot of strength and is also not easy to do in terms of coordination. Next we got the shoulder dip. This exercise is a shoulder dominant variation of the regular dip. To target your shoulder optimally, you not only have to lean forward, but you also have to aim for a straight body. The more your shoulder travels in front of your wrists and forearms, the more your delts have to work. Next on the A rank is the bodyweight lateral race. This exercise is the bodyweight equivalent to the lateral dumbbell race and also one of the very few calisthenics exercises that target the middle head of the delts directly. The only downside is that you can't adapt the exercise very well. It's simply not that easy to find the right intensity with a good strength curve and a comfortable body position. A good exercise for your rear delts is the rear delt press. Here you also work other muscles at the same time, but it's still one of the best exercises to target your rear delts with body weight only. This exercise is really hard, so if you can't push yourself up, just press your arms into the ground and try to bring your shoulder blades together. Now we move on to the S rank and here we start with the handstand push-up. Probably this doesn't come as a surprise. The handstand push-up is well known as one of the best shoulder exercises. The only downside is that you need a lot of strength, coordination and stability to do it right. Of course we talk about the wall handstand push-up. 
The freestanding handstand push-up would rank a little bit lower because you need an exceptional amount of balance and coordination. The more problems you got to even stand on your hands, the less effective this exercise gets in terms of hypertrophy. Next we got the pike push-up. This is nothing more than a handstand push-up with your feet on the ground. This makes the exercise a bit easier and less challenging in terms of stability and body control. It's also possible to change the angle or the placement of your feet and with that change the difficulty. The more vertical the angle and the higher the feet, the harder the pike push-up gets. Next on the S-rank we got the planche push-up and the pseudo planche push-up. Any version or variation of this dynamic exercise mainly targets your front but also your middle delt. The planche push-up and all of its progressions also require more balance and technique. So if you aren't used to this movement, we suggest the pseudo planche push-up instead. Here you can put more or less pressure on your shoulders depending on how much you shift your weight in front of your wrists. This can be a problem for beginners and intermediates. You want to shift your weight forward as much as possible, but you should still be able to do a couple of reps. If you can't lean that much forward because your delts are not strong enough, you should do the version on your knees. Now we continue with the best, more rear delt focused exercises. First we got the rear delt body row. The most important point of this exercise is the shoulder and elbow position. While arms close to the body will hit your rear delts to some degree, it's way better to abduct them. When you do the row, move your elbows backwards and try to pull from your shoulders instead of your arms. The last exercise works similar to the rear delt row. In the rear delt fly, you extend your elbows a bit more and with that decrease the involvement of your biceps. Even if this movement targets your middle traps and rhomboids too, it's still one of the most effective exercises to target your rear delts with body weight only. Alright guys, this was the complete list. Please don't forget that you have to train your whole body evenly. So if you want a complete workout guide that trains all muscles of your body in a balanced way, you should head over to kellymove.com and check our workout programs. No matter on which level you are right now, we have you covered. All of our programs are designed as a step-by-step -step online course you can follow easily. Just choose the right level for your goal and individual needs and you're ready to start. If you liked the video leave a thumbs up and activate the notifications. My name is Alex and I see you in the next video.